Hello and welcome to another edition of Community Forum. My name is Joseph Feaster. I am the host of the program. And if you're watching the program last week, I said that was going to be my last program for the year. But Roy Cohen presented me with an excellent opportunity to interview and discuss with two distinguished guests from our town here in Stoughton. So I want to get right to your meeting, our guests. Uh, to my immediate right is uh, Marguerite Rizzi, who is the superintendent of the Stoughton Public Schools. And to her immediate right is Juliet Miller, who is the principal or headmaster for the Stoughton Public Schools High School. So welcome. Thank you. It's lovely Thank to you. be here. Yeah, well, in terms, I want to go right to it, and I want to start with you, uh, Superintendent. I want to go and have you talk about the system, how mm -hmm. we're doing, how, the, how we're doing in the district, and our testing, uh, our programs. And then uh, thereafter, I want to come to you, Madam Principal, yes. and talk about what's going on at the high school, including uh, our building. Mm -hmm. So uh, starting with you there, Superintendent. So it's been a very good start to the year. Um, we have uh, many different programs going on from pre-K and even before pre-K all the way through high school. Um, our, our scores are quite good. They have uh, changed the accountability system. So there used to be a level of schools one to five. And we've always, the last few years, had at least three or sometimes four level one schools. But they're not leveling them that way now because they have different tests. So, um, but as we generally come out at uh, average or better than average in all the subject areas that get tested. And when the state compares us to districts of a similar type, so similar income, similar type of, um, the, they compare characteristics like numbers of English language learners and so on. So the, they, they put us with 10 districts that are uh, very similar to us. And when compared to those, we spend about $1,000 less a student Mm -hmm. but we achieve in the top one, two, or three in, in any of our testing as compared to those similar districts. Uh, and I think there are a lot of things that go into that. And the, the subjects the state chooses to test are English, math, and science. And those are very important. Um, but our emphasis in the system is those things. Um, but we believe that it's very important to have a well-rounded and complete education, which includes cultural education, music, art. Um, we begin teaching the concepts of computer coding now very early, even as, as young as kindergarten. Okay. And to develop the kind of thinking that you need for problem solving. Um, we teach engineering type tasks. Uh, our science programs, uh, particularly in the early grades, have moved into an area of uh, much more hands-on, building things, solving problems, working with teams and materials. Um, so that's where we're a bit ahead of the state in that regard. Um, we're very, very well placed as compared to a lot of districts in terms of technology. So when students are actually in school, we're very close to having one computer for every student at any given time. And the teachers have learned over the years, it's, it's not that all we do is teach with those, but whenever something it, when they want to bring something from the, the world in, something from the internet or different kinds of materials and resources and things, um, we now have the capacity for teachers to use literally almost anything in the known world as part of their teaching and curriculum. So it's very, it's very exciting mm -hmm. and it's, um, we very much kind of transformed to using all of the various techniques and tools that are available in the 21st century world. Well, my guess, I had on the administrators for the humanities. Yes. And, um, and it was quite fascinating for me because I had them, they were chatting with me about the teaching methodologies that exist now. I remember, you know, mine were classes with all the roles lined up, Dick, mm -hmm. Jane, and Swat, mm -hmm. rote memorization, right. et cetera. And that's not what they were discussing here. In fact, and I'm sure, Superintendent, you can elaborate on this, the ability for students at home to be able to engage the same type of work mm -hmm. by use of a computer that they learn in a classroom. Could you elaborate a little bit on that for uh, a bit? Yes, so we have moved largely away from paper textbooks, although paper novels and things are still used. Uh, but a paper textbook is a fixed book with maybe 200 pages and that information is very limited. 
we don't need to be limited by that anymore and our students do not live in that world so they all have screens and they're all using them all the time so the new texts that we have and the resources and the various materials and the way that teachers and students communicate uh, they can access through the internet or through a cloud or from an, um, a remote server anything that they can see in school they can use at home so if they are using something like the um, the new Zella the new ZLA platform which has so many things that you can read uh, you can start an article in school you can open it up on the bus you can open it up at home when you get home you can be at grandma's over the weekend and you can continue accessing all the same platform and materials that people now use in school. What I found fascinating is we went to the progressions of the grades from elementary all the way through to the middle school and now I'm going to come to you mm -hmm. uh, Madam Principal at the high school uh, because this is a progression that ultimately they get to you with a certain baseline of learning for your educators who were there. Let's talk about how things have that whole morphing process has taken place to get, once they get to you at the high school. Mm -hmm. And then as well, if it, we, you know, everyone would be excited to know where the progress is on the building. So if you could touch upon both of those subjects, that would be great. Absolutely. Um, so we have a lot of great things happen at the high school. We also had a very strong opening at the high school. Um, and in terms of uh, what Dr. Rizzi was just speaking about in terms of Newzella, it's a fabulous resource that our students are using 9 through 12. And it's, uh, what, what's really interesting about that particular uh, resource is that you can adjust the reading level so that students are reading the same content um, as each other, but at the level that's more appropriate for them. And you can adjust that on the fly or um, daily, however you want to. And it's a really great resource for them. So I just wanted to add that to what Dr. Rizzi was saying. Our, our kids are really benefiting from those resources, and we're so grateful for the support. Um, but we, uh, we have a lot of things happening in the ninth grade. We have some great programming for our students. It's such a critical year. As um, you know, research, research, research shows that if, if that's the year where students will be able to demonstrate their success over high school. Um, and so we've done a pilot program um, the past two summers in the summer of going into ninth grade to really mm -hmm. make sure our students are prepared coming into ninth grade. We hope to be able to expand that program um, beyond just um, a smaller population and beyond just a half day. Um, but they come in during the summer in sort of like a boot camp situation. We have a mandatory extended school day program for our ninth grade students to make sure and ensure they're having all the supports and needs they need um, in order to be successful in their classes as well. So that ninth grade year really is a critical year and we focus a lot of time and resources on them in order to make a um, successful four years. But beyond that, we have this year's, I'm really excited about uh, a, ser a, a service learning project we've brought on board. I'd love the opportunity to share that with the community. I think it's a great thing. Um, we are running a series of presentations under the umbrella of Together We Are Stronger. Um, it's celebrating our differences as a community. As you know, St Stoughton is a vi very diverse community in the high school. Um, being in that community is also very diverse. I mean, different races, ethnicities, languages, different family structures, income levels. Um, we have a variety of different challenges and strengths. Um, and so we're celebrating those differences and um, running this together. We are stronger series to present um, a series every month from December to May, a presentation to our student body, and the pre pre uh, presentations are representative of that diversity. And the whole umbrella is an anti-bullying, anti-harassment message. Um, anything that's exclusionary, uh, we're speaking out against that. So for example, our first presentation was um, we had director Roger Lyons come on December 12th, and he showed his documentary uh, Etched in Glass, which is the legacy of Steve Ross. He's a Holocaust survivor. Um, he saw, uh, uh, survived uh, 10 different Holocaust camps over five years, eventually um, came to the United States and did amazing things when he was here. And it's a great story about perseverance. Um, it's a great story about speaking out against hate. Um, it's a great story about recognizing the differences in others and protecting one another. Um, and so our students watched it. It had a huge impact on our students. Um, and the biggest thing that, the vis biggest visual that I can um, give you as an example of how that impact was is our 11th and 12th graders watched the movie together in the auditorium and um, afterwards Roger Lyons the director opened up for question and answer and allowed the students to speak to him which was great um, just a real life experience for them the bell rang 
not a single student moved in that auditorium. Wow. They sat there and they continued to listen, so it had a huge impact on them. But this series has also been tied together with a service learning opportunity, so um, students have the opportunity to, they don't need to, it's not a requirement, but they can take something they've learned in one or more of the presentations and develop some kind of service learning opportunity. So they can do a community service project, develop a public service announcement, do a positive messaging campaign, they develop a proposal and meet with me, and um, then they can implement that project, and they can earn uh, 1.25 credits on their transcript under service learning, which is an awesome opportunity for our kids as well. And I just want to, I believe that was a program that you had invited me to participate I in. Did. We were, had to reschedule as a result of that, so I'm still open awesome. in, in order to do that. But before I want to go to the building, uh, the, the new high school, because mm. I just want both of you to comment on I don't want our athletes and the persons who are in other programs not to feel that we're being just speaking about academics here right. because the uh, athletics and sports programs are, are as meaningful to Absolutely. the high school and I guess even the younger grades environments. Let's talk about how our Knights are doing uh, as, uh, as well. I can't agree with you more that it's so important to our students' overall experience at the high school. And uh, we're doing, uh, we had a great fall season. We um, are, many of our teams moved on into post-season um, play, and uh, we earned um, the Good Sportsmanship Award in many of our sports for the Hockamock League, as we normally do. We're, our kids represent us very well on the fields and courts. Um, we won both the uh, Thanksgiving football day game and the Powder Puff Girls won on the day before Thanksgiving, so that was a huge triumph for us at, um, as Black Knights. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, we're now moving into our winter season. We had a nice kickoff of the winter season to begin, so our students are, are getting out there and playing. And uh, We had a fantastic um, fall play. They did a series of short comedies. Um, mm -hmm. was very, it was very, it was great. The kids were very funny, um, very well attended, and they're looking forward to doing James and the Giant Peach as the musical in the spring. Um, so they're all preparing for that, our drama students. Uh, so we have a lot happening. Of course, our band and music program is phenomenal. Say, I don't want to leave. The I don't want to leave them out. out. No, right, the right. marching band has done phenomenal, yes. um, and we just had our winter instrumental concert on this past Friday, and uh, the vocal concert is um, following in January um, and they are growing and and just um, under amazing leadership under John Mange um, they're really um, flourishing. Well I'm going to come to you to start on the building this is a project I can mm -hmm. recall our early uh, conversations yeah. around that in fact uh, I, I always like to remind folks in terms of the, uh, the relationship uh, being emboldened between the town and the schools mm -hmm. happened when uh, Dr. Rizzi and me, we <laughs> had an uh, opportunity to, to do that when I'm interim town manager. So I don't want yeah. folks to have revisionist history <laughs> about that. But I know that was some of the gus discussions. I believe Deborah Sovany was uh, one of the persons on the school committee who mm -hmm. or spearheaded that. And now we're at the precipice of having the building completed. So yeah. I'm going to come to you, Superintendent, and of course have our principal chime in. Well, it's been eight years now since the first meeting um, that Deborah pulled together on a very cold December night in 2010 to talk about the possibility of a new building. And it's just such an experience to go from thinking something and then it comes into existence on the ground. And there it is. So uh, it's, it's been a long process to get there. Um, the town of Stoughton voted with a, an unprecedented mm -hmm. level of enthusiasm to go forward with the project when the choice was, I mean, obviously people get a choice, do they wish to pay for such a thing or not? And 80% almost of the voters, and we had a huge turnout for that vote, came out in favor of the, the project, um, which is fantastic. So we are doing everything that we can to give them the most spectacular result that, that we can. So um, Ms. Miller uh, put together, was our SPED director at the time, um, Heather Tucker, a, an educational plan. And then from the educational plan, the building was designed so that all of the aspects of that plan could be carried out. And the people at the MSBA who get all these plans all the time because the, they partner with us, so they 
they, they partner with everyone doing a school building that's in their grant program. So they see many, 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 many educational plans. And uh, they called the one that, that uh, Julie and Heather uh, devised the finest uh, educational plan that they'd ever seen. Well, I'm going to help our viewing audience. You were talking about the Massachusetts School yes, Building Authority. Yes, the MSBA Authority. is the Massachusetts yes. School Building Authority. And yeah. their role, because there are so many old schools in the state, they collect one penny of the sales tax all year long. And then they're authorized to take that money and give grants to districts to build different buildings. So what it ends up, the town will end up paying for just about half of this $120 million high school, and the state will be paying for the other half. I'm a believer in it, and then I'm going to come to you, uh, uh, Madam Principal. Um, giving credit where credit is due, I know our political leadership was very instrumental yes. in ensuring that, uh, and I can recall attending a, a meeting that you had me attend with the uh, Massachusetts School Building Authority mm -hmm. when their representatives were here. But I want to give kudos to our both our representatives, Kafka and yes. Galvin, and of course to our late senator, Senator Brian Joyce. Uh, I still can recall that mm -hmm. uh, the conversations where we were uh, not one of the primary districts in order to receive monies in those initial right. stages. And he, because of his clout, was be, had the ability to get us a high, uh, higher up on the list. And in fact, That's we right. were successful. So I think it's yes. important for us to recognize, obviously, there were many persons in the town and many of the committees that served with you. And I'll, you know, I'll just say it, we'll thank them all and thank all of you. But I think it's important to make those those lines yes. in the sand to give that credit to those individuals who were there. So you, you're you going to at least uh, be uh, an inheritor of this of, of this great new building. And we, yes. we touted this as getting a new building may change the landscape of persons coming into the town or mm -hmm. who will be interested because we have a brand new high school with better labs and mm -hmm. better, I, mean, I remember all of the, uh, mm -hmm. the pitch, if you will, that was made. So yeah. let's talk to us about what it is, what the plans are, the timing yeah. and all of that now. Yeah, absolutely. So um, the building is right on, on schedule and uh, it is an amazing um, process to have been involved in since the very first day of it. Um, and uh, we're watching it come up uh, out of the ground off the pages of the ed plan Dr. Rizzi um, spoke of earlier. And uh, it's, been, it's been an amazing process. It, has, it is going to change and provide so much opportunity to the town of Stoughton and to our students. Um, we do a great job now. We do a phenomenal job educating our kids in spaces that were never intended in some cases to be what they are today. And now, We'll have the opportunity next year, starting in September when we move in over the summer, um, to be in spaces that are actually intended to be a TV studio or a um, band room or a chorus room or an art room. Um, and so we won't have to contend with things like leaking roofs and cold temperatures and um, those kinds of things. That people will be able to teach and focus on learning uh, and also in a very flexible, collaborative environment. It's designed specifically with those ideas in mind um, because that is the the motion of the school district now where collaboration is key um, to the success of the students, to our success as, as professionals, um, and so that's how the building is is designed. Um, the building's, you know, open 24 hours a day practically. You know, we're using that building all the time. The community uses that building all the time, so that was also a careful consideration in the planning. Uh, and so that we are able to secure the building in the evening. You'll see that half the building is more of your event kind of spaces at night where the gymnasium, the auditorium, the black box theater will be, and the other half is where your academics will be on the opposite side. It really, um, um, you know, it's going to allow us to grow some of the programs we've already begun. So our drama program mm -hmm. will now have a black box theater um, at their disposal, which allows us to grow that program, which is a great desire of a lot of our student body. Uh, we'll have an actual band classroom, which frees up our auditorium during the school day for other presentations and opportunities. Um, we have a, an amazing uh, life skills kitchen that's being developed uh, in the project for our special ed students who need to learn life skills before they leave us at the age of 22. And um, as part of that, there's a model apartment in there so that they can learn things like laundry and taking care of a home um, for themselves. It's just uh, the labs for engineering and robotics. Um, the science labs are double, in some cases, our actual science classrooms now. 
Um, and so the, they'll be able to do some amazing labs in those spaces and create some awesome projects. And I know we have so much, but our time is whittling Absolutely. away. But I wanted to say again, I wanted to say congratulations to both of you who I know are on the committee. Uh, mm -hmm. in terms of school building committee and all of the persons that serve with you on that body. I also want to say the same for the developer and the mm -hmm. contractors because you've had a seamless process, yes, uh, seemingly a problem-free process utilizing the building during, con during the construction of the new facility. So I know we could spend time mm -hmm. doing that and maybe we'll have you all on to talk about that process sometime in the future. But what I need to do is to go to my sponsors, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to spend all my time on your future. We'll be right back. Hi, it's Gary LaPierre, and the crew wants to thank mm, 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 Maxie's Delicatessen. That's at 117 Sharon Street in Stoughton. They're 781-341-1662. American Cancer Society. Yes, they're looking for volunteers, drive cancer patients to and from their treatments. 1-800-ACS-6662 or just go to www.cancer.org. Ilsa Marks Food Pantry in St. Anthony's Free Market, 2 Park Avenue in Stoughton. For more information, call Christine Gallagher. That's at 781-341-0611 or 781-341-0549. Meals on Wheels, just ask for Jessica. You'll find her at 781-344-8882, extension 2. Stoughton Penny Saver, our business is advertising your business, they tell us. 27 Rose Glen Street, Stoughton, 781-344-4833. Community Forum Showtimes in Stoughton. It's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 6 p.m., Monday at 8 p.m., Tuesday at 5 p.m., it's on Comcast Channel 9 and Verizon Channel 28. All comments and suggestions welcome. Contact us at communityforum1 at yahoo.com. Samaritans, they're at 41 West Street in the fourth floor in Boston, 02111. Their phone number is 617-536-2460. 24-hour helplines for Samaritans. And the number is 877-870-HOPE. That's 877-870-HOPE. 4673. Samaritans, you can find them at 800 252 teen. That's 252 8336. Or find them online at SamaritansHope.org. My guests today are the superintendent of the Stoughton Public Schools, Marguerite Rizzi, and the principal for the high school, Juliet Miller. As you can see, you can contact them at the Stoughton Public Schools and the, their emails are there, so feel free to utilize them. Monday Night Bingo at Ava Torah Congregation, 1179 Central Street here in Stoughton. Doors open at 4.30, games start at 6.30. Come on, bring some friends, spend some money, help out a good cause, have some fun. Get Fresh, Stoughton's own cooking show. New episode airing now at Comcast Channel 9, Verizon Channel uh, 28. Uh, Mondays, 5.30 to 5.30s. Wednesdays at 8, 8 o'clock. Thursdays at 9 a.m. and Friday at 5 o'clock p.m. Get Fresh. Hometown Business, Hometown Business Show, uh, Tuesdays at 11 a.m., Wednesdays at 5.30, Thursdays at 8 p.m., Sundays at 7 p.m. on Comcast Channel 9, Verizon Channel 28. And another great fundraiser by Begin to Dream uh, again. It, they present Cosmos for Compassion, their third annual fundraiser. And as it says, Begin to Dream again. Is, driving, is driven by the vision of providing a safe haven for homeless women who are survivors of domestic violence. Their mission is to provide transitional support to homeless women living in shelters and to increase the community's awareness of this pervasive problem. All proceeds from this event will benefit Begin to Dream Again. The keynote speaker at this event is Cindy uh, Stumpo, uh, who is a builder and entrepreneur. And the event will be held on Saturday, January 12th of next year, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., 17 Yarmouth Road in Brookline. And if you want to know more about the event and to RSVP, because you need to be there, you can RSVP to Tanisha at 
818-918-9979. And now we are back, and if you're just tuning in, my guests are the superintendent of the Stoughton Public Schools, Marguerite Rizzi, and the principal of the high school, uh, Juliet Miller. We only have a short bit of time, but I, would, I couldn't leave this, uh, this opportunity to have you talk about you know, you're going to be moving on at the end of the school year, and what are your plans? I've been here 12 years now, and it's shocking to me how fast that has gone by, totally flown. I mean, it's been five years since we had our, our chance to work together when you were interim term manager, and that's like a while ago now. But, yes. Um, but I'm uh, ready to, to move on and do other things, and some of the things I'm going to be doing is um, there are several different things that I have in mind, uh, including uh, making some documentary films to particularly feature the voices of people who don't get heard that, so much and uh, related to issues of social justice. Uh, and that's a project I've kind of begin, I've begun moving into, um, which is in many ways an extension of education, uh, but just in a little bit of a less formal uh, kind of format. Um, and I've always been a musician, so I'll be doing more music than I've been able to do in the last 12 years. Uh, and I, I also think that for the, the benefit of the community, it was very important to tell people as early as I could that there would be a transition, so there would be lots of time to make uh, well, we're going to have to have a party for that. you before you leave here. I don't want folks to think this is a swan song. We're going to do it later. <laughs> well, we've got but, it a while, yeah. But, yeah. but we're coming to the end of the program. I want to thank both of you, but I also want to give special thanks to and wish the viewing audience a, uh, a great holiday season. Mm -hmm. But I want to thank Michael Hammond, who is the uh, uh, station manager here, Jeff Pickett, uh, Leo McGowan, as we know, uh, our or director who is uh, in the hospital now. Uh, we need to do that. C.J. Mullen, Roy Cohen, uh, and um, Tanisha Salmon, who are both the producers of this program, and Dave Young, who always helps out and likes to take pictures of my socks. But in any event, want to wish you all a great holiday season, and please tune in. <laughs>